Welcome, welcome back if you're returning. Today's video, I'm going to take you back to last week and my thrift haul. Do you remember this table? Now, I knew it was a good deal when I saw it. It was 20 bucks and there was this top table with two little side leaves and then four stacking tray tables that were underneath. At the time, I knew I wanted this top table because it's really handy in the kitchen for an extra work surface. And I knew I wanted to paint it up, add a shelf, blah, blah, blah. But in the meantime, I decided, oh my goodness, I was so inspired to finish the four tray tables. This was $306, if you can believe that. <laughs> and I got it for 20 bucks. So the four tray tables, this is how we started. Now they were in used condition, obviously. You, you know, you could see like little cut marks on the tops of a couple of them, but they were not in a bad state of repair whatsoever. All the screws were there, everything was tight, everything was fitting well. There was a couple of, um, there was one of the tray tables that had a slight separation of the planks, but other than that, they were in really good condition. So the first thing I did was clean them down and then sand them down. I didn't take the le legs off at this point. I only had to take them off one and you'll see why afterwards. And I think I'm gonna go back and paint the legs to coordinate with the tabletops. But at the time I wasn't 100% certain how I was gonna proceed. So I'm gonna sort of do these in stages. So here's the four tables that were stacked underneath and I start by sanding them, as I said, cleaning them and sanding them. So I sanded all the tops, all the sides. Um, I did two of them the legs I did and I'm going to come back to those but I decided the first one was going to be the French country one I had a couple of ideas for this but I knew I wanted to add some embellishments so I got my paper clay out and my molds and I made some um, almost I wanted it to look like a tray almost on top so I made the corners and some little trim bits and then waited for them to dry overnight and then stuck them directly onto the table with wood glue Once all my little pieces were dry and mostly flat, I ran a bead of Gorilla wood glue behind everything. Now this is paper, so it works perfectly well with the wood adhering it to the, uh, the mold to the table. I put it on the outside of the table as a sort of, I guess it's like a frame. Um, you don't want to have anything in the center of the table because you get, this is a table, you need to put things on it and anything you put on top of it, unless you're putting a, a layer of glass, um, it's not gonna be an even surface. So I glued everything down. Um, I also put a little bit of glue in all the little joins just to make sure everything stayed put and let that dry overnight. I made my own, um, paint, a chalk paint, which was one cup of paint, a third of a cup of water and a third of a cup of plaster of Paris and just mix them all together until all the lumps have gone. Uh, now this is a great little recipe because you can, as you can see, these are the little bottles that you get from the dollar store. It works perfectly and you can customise any colour, any colour you can think of, you can make your own chalk paint. So again, very economical, very easy to do, works out great. So I gave the table two coats of with the white chalk paint. Now, this is dollar store paint, so the quality of the paint is not brilliant. You use better quality paint and it gives you much better coverage. But I knew this was just going up a deck underneath the decoupage paper that I was doing. I needed to get rid of the wood surface so that it didn't reflect through the paper. This is a vintage wrapping paper, which 
to me had a lovely French vibe to it. So that's all I'm doing now is putting Mod Podge down on the table and laying the paper on top of it and then pressing it down, being careful to press over all the little moulds that I've made um, to make sure that you can sort of see the detail almost through the paper. Um, it's just giving everything a really good um, press and make sure that it's all adhered properly. So all as you can see I'm doing here is making sure there's plenty of Mod Podge on the table and also on the little moulds that I've applied so that I can get them into all the little nooks and grannies. Um, you can see here the way the, the paper has taken up a, a, a bit of the paint from underneath. That's just because it wasn't uh, completely dry when I did it but under most circumstances that wouldn't happen. So you can see I am almost moulding the paper over the areas I need. I'm pressing the paper in so that I'm getting a definite impression of what's underneath. Um, I'm going to go over once I'm done and highlight these areas so you can still see what's underneath. Um, you know, it's, it gives it a very aged look. So I actually used a stencil and stamps for this for some reason the stenciling part i must have i don't know where it went i thought i'd pressed film but uh video but i don't think i had so um all i did was i laid the stencil down on the little table um, and then just went over it with a little sponge brush and the same um, stamp pad that i've got here um, and then I did the same obviously with the stamps. I picked the stamps that I wanted, I put a layer of the paint on and then stamped them into place. Uh, once it was dry I also went over it with um, a highlight of gold, um, just, just on a few of the letters again just to give it a bit more depth. I also highlighted around the moulding which was underneath obviously and I did it in the gold and also the blue and it picked up on the uh, raised areas and again gives it a nice little piece of detail. I covered it with two layers of high gloss um, acrylic finish and that was the first table done. Now if you've watched this channel before then you know I'm a bit obsessed with William Morris. So this tray, I knew I wanted to add handles to it. These were also thrifted a couple of weeks ago. Um, this one, I took the legs off because I needed to position the handles in such a way that I knew I could fit them because of the legs being underneath. So um, I positioned them where I wanted them and then I you can see I'm pressing really hard. So this is a good way if you don't uh, if you don't have a measuring tape, which I couldn't find one, of course. Um, so that I knew where I had to drill my hole. So I did it for both sides. I positioned it with a piece of a block of wood, um, which was the exact right length from each side. And then marked it by pressing down very hard and it left an indentation where I knew I had to drill for the handles. Hey, if you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my stuff, please give me a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thanks so much. So as you can see, I drilled a guide ho hole first of all, um, just to make sure I got them in the right spot. Then I changed the drill bit and made the holes a bit bigger. I also countersank them just a little bit because the screws had quite a big uh, lumpy head on them um, the screw head so I wanted them to sit sort of flush when I had the um, bottom legs on so everything fit nice and, and snugly once the holes are done check your handles fit perfectly so you're ready to go to the next step, which is laying the decoupage paper down. 
So this paper I've used on many different projects. I always use the same paper. I get this off Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. It goes on very easily. It's just a matter of Mod Podge on top of the table, laying it down, and then a layer of Mod Podge on top uh, of the paper once you've finished. Then it's just a quick push through of the handles, screw them from the bottom. Time for table three. Now this one may be my favourite. I will leave the, uh, it's an Etsy purchase for this downloadable print. I have used it before. I will leave this, uh, the name of the um, Etsy shop where I got this from. I printed this off. I got it done at the UPS store. It cost me, I think, $1.79. And this was the biggest size that they could do without being custom. I think it was 11 by 16, something like that. But it was, I didn't want it to fit the full size of the table. So this was good enough for me. Again, I made some more um, of the chalk paint, with this time with the black, and gave it two coats. I then traced the shape, the rough size of the print, and then, as you can see, I mud podged the table and laid the print on top. You give it a nice thick layer, because this paper's quite thick, so it can take it, and then lay it down, press it as firmly and as flatly as you possibly can. And as you can see, I trimmed the white frame that was around the picture because I wanted it to the picture to blend into the black background of the table. I will be adding gold leaf as well, but um, keeping it all in the same color tones absolutely adds to the finished look. So now I take my metal leaf adhesive. Um, I wait for the Mod Podge to be dry underneath. Um, and then, as you can see, I'm sort of dabbing it on. I want it to look as though it's a worn surface. So I'm not completely covering the black area. I am going on to the picture. I also put highlights on the picture. There was a gold bracelet, gold earrings, and she's holding like a gold Chatelaine key fob. So I put all little bits of the gold leaf adhesive on there as well, so that when I put the gold leaf down, it will highlight those areas once it's um, been peeled off and brushed off. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm just laying down the gold leaf. Once the adhesive has been on for about 20 minutes, it just starts to get tacky. And that's the best time to add your gold leaf to the um, project. So what I'm doing here now is pressing down on the gold leaf with a fairly strong bristled brush. It's not a soft brush. It's um, it's quite a hard brush and um, that makes sure that because I don't want it all to stick I want some of it to come back off the page so I've also got some tissue paper you can use brown paper depends um, how much you want to remove and I'm now rubbing the gold leaf and as you can see it's wherever the glue I didn't put the glue it just comes right off so you can burnish the gold leaf and remove it at the same time onto table four. Now I wanted to do a marbling effect. I haven't done any to be honest since the 90s. Um, so this was kind of a bit of an experiment so I thought I'll try it on the smaller table first. This was the one table that had a slight um, crack in it um, so I figured this one would be the one that I would practice on because next week I'm going to do the big table that's sitting in the kitchen and I wanted it to look like a marble countertop so I've given it a coat of the blue cabinet paint that I've used in the kitchen and then I've gone over it with a different shade of blue a darker uh, like a mix with a bit of black in it um, and then I've gone over it with tissue paper, um, a wet rag, and I'm kind of dappling it and softening the edges um, because what I want to do is give it that um, feeling of depth, you know, as you do in marble. You can always get a picture of a piece of marble if you want to try and replicate that. Um, I've also got my, this is the darker paint that's going on as well, and you're literally, you're blending this in. You don't really want to see all the different colours, you want to blend them all in. Um, 
and then what I did was I took a toothbrush with a little bit of um, the gold leaf size on it and I flecked it onto the surface and I also took a paintbrush with um, a little bit of gold leaf and dragged that across the surface um, to cause the veins and then once that's done uh, dried for about 20 minutes I go back over it with sheets of the gold leaf and then do the same type of thing again where you're sort of burnishing it and removing the pieces that you don't want. Once I was happy with the finish, I gave it uh, two coats of a high gloss acrylic to finish it off, but you can use whatever you have because you want that marble effect, which is a very, very high gloss. So you've waited. <laughs> Let's have a look at the French country, the William Morris, the Moody Victorian and the marble table. And tell me which one you like the best. I did mention I will be matching the legs on the tables to the tops of the uh, tray tables. I'll be picking colours from each one to finish them but I've had a bit of a busy week doing these tables and trying to get ready for Easter so you can forgive me for not completely finishing them but they, they I did well for, in a week to do all this. Now I especially like the way this table ended up and I thought it would be perfect in the garden for the summer. Now this little table, I've got a choice of two places. This could either go in the downstairs hallway or in the upstairs hallway because I've gone with that whole um, William Morris theme there. But I absolutely love how this has turned out, especially the handles, they look so cool. So this table again, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. This isn't perfect, of course. This was my kind of hit and miss table because I wanted to see how to perfect the look that I want to put on the bigger table in the kitchen. Um, but I am very pleased with how this turned out. This is another table I thought uh, it's very flexible because I can use it outside because it's been it's got that polyurethane layer so it's not going to be affected by the weather should it get left out in the rain. But it's also good to use in the library. Um, you know, sometimes if you just you know need that little extra table, they, these are just so handy. I do think this one might be my favourite. Um, I just love how it's turned out, especially with the little touches of the gold here and there. I just think it would look really nice in a 
you know, a moody boudoir or even a bathroom actually it might look quite cool. Now you can add as much or as little as this gold leaf as you wanted to. You could put just a band around it and give it like a frame. Um, but I did want it something to look a little bit more stylized um, and I wanted it to look a little bit more aged. I did go over the whole thing with a layer of decoupage. You can see, almost see the brush marks. So it looks like the paintings, like an oil painting, but it does protect the gold leaf because that will tarnish over time. Um, so it not only gives it that finishing look, but it's a protective layer also. Well, I hope you enjoyed my tray table makeovers. Um, let me know in the comments which one's your favourite. Um, also, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to try out for you i'm thinking actually with the next table um, that i might try an epoxy finish um, i've seen a couple of girls do it on youtube and i'd like to give that a try but finally i wanted to show you what i'd done to the other table so this was the original it had the tables all stacked inside it i added a shelf i'm going to sand that down and hopefully get that one finished for next week's video Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.